A big thank you to London for Sudan, Madania, and all the groups behind the scene that have been pushing the cause and the fight for the liberation of Sudan to the forefront here in Britain. As mentioned before, my name is Cassius. I'm part of the Revolutionary Communist Group. You might see us at lots of different rallies with our newspaper, Fight Racism, Fight Imperialism. Does exactly what it says on the tin, providing anti-racist and anti-imperialist coverage of struggles in Britain and struggles around the world for more than 45 years. We have been supporting this campaign to liberate Sudan and extend our absolute solidarity with the Sudanese people who are facing this repression at the hands of the imperialists. As communists in Britain, I would like to reaffirm our position and to contextualize the importance of our solidarity and what that looks like here in Britain specifically. As communists, we reaffirm the right of self-determination for oppressed nations such as Sudan and directly confront British imperialism and its attempt to deny the Sudanese people their sovereignty. We recognize that imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism, cannot be destroyed without oppressed nations liberating themselves economically and politically from oppressor nations such as Britain in order to gain economic and political sovereignty. So therefore, we understand that the tasks we face here in Britain will be different than the tasks faced by those in Sudan. But yet, we are all fighting for the same goal, and that is the end of imperialism. We can look to the recent US election and Britain's recent general election to understand one key thing. Democrat or Republican, Labour or Tory, or even if a third party manages to win, imperialism will be business as usual. It was under a Democrat government that the Al Shifa Pharmaceutical Hospital was bombed and it was under successive Democrat governments that the crippling sanctions on Sudan were continued. So we understand whatever party it is, imperialist parties are all the same. But most importantly, I want to contextualize this to Britain's role in Sudan, as we are here in Britain. Britain's partition of Sudan into North and South, its role in forming classes tied to ethnicity and to religion, and its purposeful underdevelopment of South Sudan were all colonial initiatives. Given Britain's role in Sudan's oppression, we must build a movement here in the belly of the beast with solidarity with the Sudanese people. But who are our friends in the struggle? Time and time again, when there is a crisis caused by imperialism, we are told to look to the Labour Party. Labour's Foreign Secretary, David Lammy, for example. Shame. Shame on that man. Charlatan. <laughs> I won't say that on the mic. <laughs> At the summit in Washington in July, he said that the Labour government wants to end the violence in Sudan. It's pledged a measly £2 million for Sudanese refugees and its MPs claim that it is showing global leadership in helping Sudan. I don't think so. We need to realise that the Labour Party has always supported British imperialism from its inception. So it's time for a brief history lesson. The first Labour government under Ramsay MacDonald, the first Labour government continued the Anglo-Egyptian condominium, essentially British rule over Sudan with Egypt as its subordinate helping it. MacDonald openly, openly declared that there will be no arrangement which would, and I quote, jeopardize the current administration and development of that country. In nicer terms, what he is trying to say is that colonialism is on the menu and Sudan will not get its liberation under a Labour government. Blood on their hands, absolutely. 
because Britain's main concern at that time was ensuring a steady supply of cheap Sudanese labor, such as under the Gezira scheme, which robbed the Sudanese people of their cotton and sent it back to the empire. And there was no change in the stance under the successive Labour government of 1929 to 1935. Absolute shame on that. Moving on to the post-war government under Clement Attlee, a so-called socialist, progressive, peace-loving, freedom guy, built the NHS, all of that jazz. We know it is a facade. We know it is lies. Because when it came to the question of Sudan, he also said... There will be no change in the existing status and administration of Sudan. Once again, saying that colonialism will be continued even as Britain's grip over its colonies began to wax and wane. In post-independence in Sudan, under a Labour government under Harold Wilson of 66 to the 70s, we saw his speech where he said, Africa, is it argued that we have no role there? If we abdicate responsibility, then who will take responsibility? Completely denying the sovereignty of the Sudanese people and completely rejecting the idea that they could rule themselves free of foreign interference. Under his government, we saw increased relations with South Africa during its apartheid era, it became the second biggest export for Britain at the time. We saw a slap on the wrist for Rhodesia and its occupation of what we call Zimbabwe today. And we also saw Tony Benn illegally sign away Namibia's uranium, a completely racist Labour government furthering British imperialism and its incentives. More recently, under Blair, under Gordon, the previous Labour government, we saw increased imperialist aggression from Britain under these so-called progressives, under the Labour Party, which supposedly stands for the working class, the global working class, I might say. We saw this in the threat of further sanctions placed on Sudan, on top of the existing US sanctions. We saw the threat of military intervention. We saw the threat of a no-fly zone, the threat of bombing, bases in Sudan, bombing airports. That is what was threatened under the previous Labour government. The present Labour government, even when in opposition to the Tories, has not lifted a hand to stop the weapons that are going to UAE, to stop its relations, its neo-colonialism, its imperialist domination of Africa. It offers aid with one hand, and weapons with another hand. Blood on their hands. Blood on their hands! So I want to say again, these two imperialist parties, whether it's in the US, whether it's in Britain, it will be imperialism, business as usual. And our task in Britain, as I mentioned before, the oppressor nation, is to attack the ruling class and their interests to bring British imperialism to its knees. We must contextualize our actions and solidarity with Sudan into concrete political tasks. As I said, voting for either imperialist party, sending letters to MPs who earn a salary from this system of global exploitation from imperialism and presenting Sudan solely as a humanitarian tragedy is a substitute for what really must be done in this country. We must make the genocide happening in Sudan a political crisis for the ruling class, something that is on the tip of everybody's tongue, such as what we see with Palestine. That is driving a wedge in the ruling class. It is presenting a problem for them. That is what we must do here in Britain. And to do that, we must agree on concrete demands, absolutely. While some say hands off Sudan, I've had others calling for humanitarian military intervention in the form of UN and NATO. It's a bit of an oxymoron, humanitarian military intervention. These are the very imperialist powers that are fueling the war on the ground. 
And we must also recognize the African Union, AFRICOM, and the African Development Bank are all neo-colonial institutions. They are neo-colonial institutions enforcing neoliberal policies and military aggression at the behest of the US and its Western allies. And we are seeing that all across Africa, the protest and uprising in Kenya, in Mozambique, in Uganda, across the nation is these neoliberal policies enforced by the West that is crippling the content. And these institutions are nothing more than blackface imperialism. I say once again, no one can give people freedom through military intervention. History shows us this. They can only liberate themselves. So we need to build a democratic movement with consistent demands. Secondly, I would like to say congrats to all of you for mobilizing, for being here, for coming to these rallies. But I will say if you truly want to make a difference day in, day out, then you must get yourself organized. We hear this term very often, organize, organize. But what does that really mean? What does it really look like? Getting organized means dedicating yourself to an organization. And I must say, there are some fantastic organizations here today, is there not? There are fantastic organizations here today, day in, day out, making, fighting imperialism, fighting what we see, their political responsibility on a daily basis, making political activism a part of their life. Only through being in an organization can you effectively strategize on a larger scale how to escalate for Sudan. And escalation is absolutely needed. And then on a wider scale, on perhaps even a pan-African scale, how do we combat imperialism? How do we combat British imperialism? Which is not only a problem in terms of super exploitation of those in the oppressed nations, but the exploitation of our working class people here in Britain. Without the exploitation of working class people here in Britain, imperialism has no funds, it has no labor power, it has no movement to continue the super exploitation of the African continent. So what I'm saying today is get yourself organized, fight back against British imperialism, and fight racism, fight imperialism. Free, free Sudan! Free, free Sudan!